What exactly gives Japan the confidence to believe that a high-speed glide missile that doesn't even qualify as a double cone design could challenge China's Dongfeng-17, which has been in service for six years? In late August 2025, Japan's Ministry of Defense made a high-profile announcement that its domestically developed high-speed glide missile for island defense had completed its second test launch in the United States touted as exceeding Mach 5 with a maximum range of 900 kilometers. Japan has hyped this missile as an ace weapon against regional threats. Yet, beneath the propaganda veneer, its technical substance is deeply disappointing. It is merely a ballistic missile employing conventional rocket-boosted propulsion. Its warhead lacks even the signature double-cone design of hypersonic weapons let alone the more advanced wave-riding configuration. Its terminal maneuverability is extremely limited, and strictly speaking, it can only be classified as a long-range tactical ballistic missile, falling far short of a true hypersonic missile. Japan's operational concept for this missile exposes its strategic intent. Its range covers China's eastern coastal areas and the Taiwan region, targeting Chinese missile bases and aircraft carrier strike groups. However, both objectives face insurmountable technical hurdles. Striking hardened missile bases requires nuclear warheads, a capability Japan, as a non-nuclear state, fundamentally lacks. Targeting mobile aircraft carriers demands overcoming the thermal barrier, communication blackout to achieve terminal precision guidance, a technology not only absent in Japan but not fully mastered even by the United States. China overcame the data link communication challenge for hypersonic missiles as early as 2022 achieving precise strike capability against moving targets. By contrast, China's hypersonic weapons technology has entered a mature deployment phase. The DF-17, unveiled in 2019, is the world's first operational wave-riding hypersonic missile. Its lift body design enables a skip-jump trajectory in near space, executing six maneuvering changes at Mach 10 speeds, rendering existing missile defense systems completely ineffective. China's technological breakthroughs extend beyond the missile itself to encompass entire combat systems, remote sensing satellite constellations lock onto targets. The WZ-8 high-speed reconnaissance drone conducts close-range verification, and the Type-055 destroyer launches YJ-21 missiles, completing the entire detect control strike evaluate process within 20 minutes. Chinese scientists have even developed a simplified antenna technology the cost effectively solves the global challenge of hypersonic communications. Even more astonishing is China's deep investment in fundamental research. Wind tunnel complexes in the Gobi Desert conduct live fire tests weekly, accumulating over 100,000 hours of experimentation. Ceramic based composite materials have surpassed the 2000 degrees C threshold, far exceeding the 1500 degrees C bottleneck achieved by US laboratories. China has also developed novel cooling systems enabling missiles to maintain stable thermal management for 2.5 hours, boosting terminal speeds to Mach 20. These technological advances empower China's hypersonic weapons not only with extreme speed, but also with human in the loop precision control capabilities. Through 6G laser communication technology, they achieve the ability to re-select targets post-launch. Japan's timing of this announcement, just before the September 3, 2025 military parade, marking the 80th anniversary of China's victory in the war of resistance against Japanese aggression, carries clear provocative intent. Yet the gap in technological prowess cannot be bridged by propaganda stunts. Even if Japan's missile advances to Block 2 with a wave-riding warhead, it still faces a series of fundamental scientific and engineering challenges. Meanwhile, China has set its sights higher. The JF-22 wind tunnel at Mianyang Aerodynamics Research Institute is testing a sixth-generation missile prototype capable of Mach 30, approaching the threshold for one or global strike. Japan's pursuit of long-range strike capabilities is closely tied to its alignment with the U.S. Indo-Pacific strategy aimed at containing China's development. Beyond developing its own missiles, Japan has also acquired U.S.-made Tomahawk cruise missiles, progressively eroding its exclusively defensive defense doctrine. The U.S. also plans to deploy the Typhoon medium-range missile system in Japan, capable of launching Standard 6 and Tomahawk cruise missiles with strike ranges covering China's eastern coastline and Russia's far east. Such military expansion not only violates the spirit of Japan's pacifist constitution, but also poses a serious threat to regional stability. While maintaining strategic composure, China continues to strengthen its national defense capabilities. At the military parade on September 3, 2025,
China showcased multiple advanced weapon systems previously unseen. China is considering establishing the world's first dedicated hypersonic weapons command for near space strikes, integrating satellites, drones, and missile systems to achieve precise command and rapid response. This systemic advantage far surpasses what Japan can achieve with just one or two missile types. Notably, Japan chose to conduct this test launch in the United States, not only to circumvent domestic legal restrictions, but also reflecting its deep reliance on American missile technology. Japan lacks independent missile test sites and a comprehensive evaluation system, forcing it to rely on U.S. testing facilities and data support. This dependency will become a fatal weakness in wartime. China, however, possesses a fully autonomous R and D system and testing grounds, including vast desert ranges in the northwest and mobile target ranges in the South China Sea, enabling round-the-clock, full-process live-fire testing. Technologically, Japan's hypersonic weapons program follows a three-phase trajectory. The current Block 1A phase uses a conventional conical warhead, the planned Block 1B employs a dual-cone design, and the future Block, the second of may potentially adopt a wave-riding body. While this incremental development path appears prudent, it has already fallen significantly behind China's one-step-to-completion model. China completed the first test launch of the DF-17 in 2014, whereas Japan has yet to master even dual-cone technology, indicating a technological gap of at least a decade. Furthermore, Japan faces bottlenecks in material science. Hypersonic vehicles endure surface temperatures reaching 2,000 degrees C, demanding advanced thermal insulation materials and cooling technologies. China has developed new ultra-high-temperature ceramic composites and active cooling systems, while Japan remains reliant on imported technologies and materials in this domain. Regarding guidance systems, China has overcome the challenge of plasma blackout communication, achieving stable data transmission under hypersonic conditions, a critical technology Japan is unlikely to master in the near term. On the 80th anniversary of World War II's end, instead of deeply reflecting on its historical culpability, Japan is preoccupied with bolstering its military capabilities. Some right-wing politicians even openly glorify its aggressive wars as liberating Asia. This inversion of historical perspective, coupled with its military expansionist tendencies, warrants high vigilance from all peace-loving nations and peoples. China's developmental momentum is unstoppable. Any attempt to contain China through military encirclement will ultimately fail. Technological gaps can be bridged through investment, but distorted historical perspectives only steer nations toward peril. While pursuing missile technology, Japan should perhaps focus more on how to play a constructive role in regional peace and stability. Fundamentally, modern warfare is a contest between integrated systems, not individual weapons. China has established a unified airspace land combat system encompassing remote, sensing satellite constellations, over-the-horizon radar networks, high-altitude long-endurance drones, and quantum communication networks. Within this comprehensive framework, hypersonic weapons represent merely one component. Japan, however, has yet to establish a comprehensive operational system. Even if its missiles are successfully developed, they are unlikely to deliver their intended effects in actual combat. China's missile defense system, featuring the HQ-19 interceptor, laser weapons, and electronic countermeasure systems, is capable of effectively countering various hypersonic threats. The military technical gap between China and Japan is systemic and comprehensive, an objective reality that cannot be altered by one or two star weapons.